Welcome back to Talanoa with Tupe. I'm here with Fiso John Fiso, one of the preeminent Pacific entrepreneurs in New Zealand and a longtime advocate for improving outcomes for Pacifica. Salo falava lawa fionga Fiso. Welcome to the show. Happy to be here. Fiso, there's so much we want to unpack in this interview, given your advocacy for um, improving out- outcomes for Pacifica. Mm. Um, but first, uh, can we talk about education? Because sure. that seems to be a very consistent theme throughout your life and career mm. and a service for which you were awarded in o- ONZM. Mm. What was it that your parents instilled in you and your eight siblings, uh, which meant that you could all find success in your respective fields? Well, I think uh, there's a parallels between our family and probably your own family, Tupi, with um, uh, uh, their education journey. And I think the, the reality is when you've got parents who value education, you know, uh, that goes through the whole family. So not only the parents, I had um, uh, a moral compass set by a lot of my uncles and aunties who were in the church, mm. pretty much like your family. And also we had older siblings who went through uh, college and university who set the standard for us. And so I would say there's, it's not just our parents, but obviously primarily our parents because they wanted to give us a better life coming out from the Pacific Islands in the early 50s mm. to give their children a better opportunity. So that's the first thing. They had aspire, aspirations to improve the lives of their, their kids. Mm. And I think apart from that, then they had the extended family who also helped and supported our aspirations to get through. Six of us went to university and, and got university qualified. And I think... Uh, Back then, that was unusual. But when you look at the, the how it happened, I think um, little decisions like we were part of the Methodist Church, the uh, PRC Church, the start off with the Newtown, but we couldn't understand the language. So my father actually sent us to the Baptist Church, which was an English-speaking church. And I think from there, we started doing Bible readings, we talked to other uh, non-Pacific people. And so we got a bit of a, a, a different view of, of how other people thought and we got to read things in English and probably improved our, our, our own experiences. So apart from them, we had um, my older brother and sister, I credit them a lot. Mm-hmm. My older sister became a senior manager at the Ministry of Education, um, a teacher that I taught with as well, um, and my older brother who was in, ultimately ended up as an inspector in the police and, and doing a whole lot of things in the Pacific. But they were sort of uh, led the way for us. So a lot of it is your parents mm-hmm. provide the opportunity and then your your siblings lead the way. And so I just went to college and followed what they did. And he was he was unusual because he played badminton. You know, he was in the Marty Cup rowing eight, you know, which for a Pacific Islander back then was unheard of. Um, you know, they also valued education as well um, and won a career. So I think that set the pathway for the, the rest of the siblings. Um, I had a, an uncle who was the, the president of the Methodist Church in Samoa, but he got posted to uh, Belgium as part of the United Council of Churches. And I, I used to talk to him a lot. And uh, I remember getting school certificate and him giving me my first gold Parker pen for getting my school certificate. I think that was a, another key moment for me going, well, you know, this is a good pathway. But so it was a range of people, but I do um, want to credit my parents for actually valuing education and giving us the opportunities that a large family of eight uh, uh, did. That's extraordinary. It sounds like you had very strong parental support and very strong support from your community. Definitely. I'm still paying for it. <laughs> yes. 